Hi, this is Beth Z, your nerdy best friend, and do I have a treat for you? We are going to be talking about Microsoft Copilot, and here's why I'm doing it. Y'all, I was so confused, so confused about Copilot. Every time I, oh, thank you for the glasses compliment. Every time I heard about Copilot, it was like, Copilot is 365 and Copilot is the big thing. And then you didn't get the big thing unless you paid a lot of money. And then what is this thing? I was like crazed about this. And I, <clears throat> I hate to say it in front of anybody, but I'm a Mac girl and I didn't have a lot of experience. I couldn't investigate it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get in there and I'm going to see what this is all about. And I have been doing research with my husband's computer upstairs. But hmm, do you have a husband or a spouse? Hmm. It's like they don't like you touching their stuff. And I was thinking I was going to have to bring the computer downstairs and then it would be a thing and all that. So look, look back there. I sent him out this morning to buy my own computer so we can do things. So. I'm going to do all I can to give you this insight into Microsoft Copilot, everything I've learned. And I am almost positive that this will help you get your head around some of the things. There's some weird things that have happened with the word Copilot. Copilot initially was a GitHub thing. I don't really understand GitHub. It's a developer's place or whatever. It was a GitHub thing that had to do with coding, and it probably still is. But that's kind of the original verbiage of the commonplace use of Copilot that we heard about. And then all of a sudden, we had Microsoft doing different things. So the first world of this was Bing, Bing Chat. Now, if you've been paying attention or if you've been to one of my sessions, you probably know that it's kind of surprising that ChatGPT is was created on November 30th, 2022. So February of 2023, Microsoft, who invested heavily, heavily in Bing Chat, uh, in ChatGPT, Microsoft released its own version called Bing Chat. And at first it was restricted and all kinds of stuff. And then they opened it up and everybody was happy. But Microsoft said, let me go a little further. And then they did something. They released news. They were, they were going to have something called Microsoft Copilot 365. The 365 is the main thing you can need to think of here. So they called it Microsoft Copilot. Before, they hadn't used this word. It was Bing Chat. And then it was Microsoft Copilot 365. Microsoft Copilot 365 is an enterprise tool. It's the big guns, y'all. And it's what gets all the buzz. And while I'm here talking about that one, I'm going to come into my own session. And I got a lot of buttons here, so hang in there with me. I'm going to show you a little video of Microsoft Copilot. This is the original concept that they had of what Microsoft Copilot was going to be. Thank you. 
So, as you saw there, big hopes and dreams. But the 365 version was originally, I can't even say it out loud. They wanted $30 per person with a minimum of 300 employees, 300 licenses, when people had the big, big, big packages. They wanted some serious money from this because it was already like $56, 40-something dollars or $56 per person for a company to have that version of Microsoft 365. But then they were adding $30 per person with a minimum of 300 licenses for that version. And if you saw the concept behind that version, it does, it integrates everything on your computer. So everything that your computer has access to, it will bring together and make this magic happen. And everybody was like, ooh, well, wait, they were like this. And the rest of us are like, what is happening? We will never have that because it's stupid expensive. Thank you very much. So that was the beginning of the co-pilot era. Era, era, era. Then in fall of 2023, remember we started off, we had Bing Chat, and then we had this thing called co-pilot. Oh, I'll do it on this side so I'm not uh, on the other side. Otherwise, I'm in the graphic. So we had Bing Chat. And then we had Microsoft Copilot. And in the fall of 2023, Microsoft started bringing those names together because then it was like Copilot with Bing Chat. I don't know. And then they dropped the Bing Chat part of it. So they said, this concept is Copilot. And the concept that is Copilot has different levels. The 365 being the big, big, big expensive one, zero people in my world are going to have. And Copilot is Bing Chat. All right, so now I'm going to go to the next level they, they brought it to, which was to put it into Windows 11. So Bing Chat is free and available on the web. And I'm going to show you all some samples in just a minute. So Bing Chat is free and available on the web. Then the version of Copilot that is embedded into PCs, which is why I had to go buy this thing, is also free. It comes with it, but it doesn't have those characteristics that I just showed you from Microsoft 365. And we got a little bitter. We meaning small businesses, independents, we're like, you know, there are some characteristics there that we would really like to have and features, but we're, we can't get, we don't, we'll never have 300 licenses and it's too expensive anyway. So in, let's see, January, they started changing the pricing. They said, okay, we see all you people who want to give us some money, so let's make it possible. So they created something called Copilot Pro. So now if, if you're keeping track, we have Copilot, which is the free version. Then we have Copilot Pro, which is the one I use. And we have Copilot 365. I should go like this because they get more and more expensive and they have more and more features. So your questions may be where, when, and how much. All right, Copilot, like I said, it's on the web. It has apps, it's on Windows, and it's free. It's integrated into what you do. You can use it very quickly. And let me show you where it is. Let me come here. And let me go to almost anywhere. So this site is bing.com. 
It's also at copilot at microsoft.com. And I'll go ahead and put a couple of these in the chat. Bing.com and microsoftcopilot.com are both the free version. So what you can do from here is what you can do on ChatGPT. Let me just give you a sample of the kind of things it can do. And it shows you the kind of things it can do. So if you notice way over there, I am not signed in to this site. So it is free and you don't have to sign in, but it limits you a lot. So ask me anything. I'm going to scroll through. These are just some of the suggestions they have. Oh, this is kind of apropos. Where should I travel if I have pollen allergies? A chew, both of my husband and I were sneezing this morning. And it is now giving me an answer. I believe, and I'm not sure, that what this tool does, if you're not if you're not signed in, I think it limits you to like five responses, but it, I see some limits somewhere. I don't see limits other places, and I just don't know. So here we are. This is the dedicated site to Copilot, and that is the answers. So when I come over here to Bing, I can do the same kind of things. Let's see, what are the differences between, I need to throw a party for six people who are vegetarians. So you can have it in here and you can also search immediately with Copilot right there. And it has integrated that into what you do. It's even further integrated, and I didn't pull this up on here, into the Microsoft Edge website. So the Microsoft Edge web, uh, not website, browser is like, Chrome and Safari and all those internet browsers, but it's made for Microsoft and it is very much entrenched in there. So those are two places you have it. That is Copilot. Now, what I'm going to do is a little bit awkward and weird, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to go across over here and I'm going to show you what Copilot is inside Windows 11. So now I'm on my PC. The main purpose of this whole thing is to help you understand the levels and what's free and what's available to you and what you have to pay for. So I'm going to share my screen the old fashioned way. On the far side over there, inside Windows, you have the full version of the old Bing chat and the new Copilot, the basic tool that is pretty much what ChatGPT is, is right here. And when I say pretty much what ChatGPT is, I mean seriously, because Microsoft invested heavily in ChatGPT, and that's what all of the Copilot tools are based on. Here's what you can do with Windows 11 and a little bit in Windows 10, but it's mostly Windows 11 with a built in. And way down at the bottom, I have a little icon, very tiny on yours, that's Copilot. And it says preview because it's not really very polished yet. So over on that side, you see the preview, the chat in there. You can do with it what you can with the website. So right now I can get in here and what's the ne next trend in fashion? The best reviewed coffee grinder. I have a nice coffee grinder. I don't really need one, but it is telling me the best coffee grinder. One thing to remember is that I have upgraded to Copilot Pro. That doesn't change the functionality of what I have on this computer, but what it changes is the speed it'll come and the amount I can ask and the quality of the higher level of the version. I think it's a little confusing, but it's built into Windows 11. One of the things you can do with it, which <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, well, that's dumb. It's so much easier to do that manually, but I was wrong almost immediately. One of the things you can do with it is you can ask it to do things on your computer. I wrote, turn off the speakers. 
And it says, sure, do you want me to set the volume level to zero? I'm like, yeah. And the reason was I was trying to get ready for this session. I didn't have a lot of time and I had to figure out where the settings were. And I was just like, oh, this is one thing it can do. It can turn off speakers because I was thinking that that was kind of dumb. I wouldn't type out turn off speakers or you can chat with it with this microphone. But it was very handy. It worked immediately. And so it is embedded in here. It can do things like, I'm going to say, what can you do? And it can do all kinds of different functionality in your Windows machine. So information and research, creative writing, productivity, entertainment, all of those things are regular things it can do. What can you do in Windows 11? All right, so I'm ask, getting a little bit more specific. I can launch apps. I can manage the settings. I can troubleshoot, like my audio is not working. File management and system utilities. All those are built-in capabilities to what we have here. In addition, very tiny down there under the, under the input box, there is a picture tool and a snipping tool. Let me just go to Microsoft Edge. So here we have the party for six people again. All right. And I'm going to go to this site. If you notice too, this is Edge. Remember I told you Edge has even more capabilities. And in here, as soon as I did an inquiry, did you see that it went in this little box and says, sure, I can suggest it. So it brought Copilot to Edge while I was just doing my regular stuff. Here we have the main dishes. Now, what I can do with the screenshot thing is, I've got my pictures there. I can come to here and see the recipe. And then I've got some words. Now, with the screen capture piece, I can go add a screenshot. Oh, it already did a, an ad for me. There we go. So I can add a screenshot into there. And then it's adding it to Copilot. I can say extract text, I think. One of the things that you, sh you need to remember is that today, these things are this. Tomorrow, we have no idea. So it may come back and say, I can't extract text. And then tomorrow it might say, here's some text extraction. We don't really know. Another thing you could do when you're hanging out with Copilot on the web. Oh, there you go. It did put it. Uh, it did put it there. I can also go to any page and go to, let's see, expert advice. And I can ask it to summarize what's on the page. It's very tiny, again, because of the settings on this computer. But way over there, it says summarize the page in Microsoft Edge. So if you have a long page of text, let's see, I'm gonna allow it, a long page of text, it is going to summarize what's on the page. Vinegar shelf life, that's one of the things that's on the page. So this is built into your Windows device. This is why I bought a $1,500 computer first thing this morning, because I wanted to show you those four things. And I'm going to keep it because I need to keep track of these things. Those were the major things that you can do inside Windows 11 with the free version of Copilot. Now let's move up the ladder and go to the one that I have, which is Copilot Pro. And that was released. Let me see. Let me come back to here. All right, so I told you that, oh, yes, January 2024. Thank you for reminding me. That I told you that Copilot 365 Business and Enterprise is $30 a month. Now, what they did after nobody paid them, or maybe three people paid them for 300 licenses at $30 each, is that they moved that level down a little bit. And now, if you get Business Enterprise version of Microsoft, which I should have because I use it as a business, rather than individual family, which is where I am, you can now upgrade just yourself 
And it's not that much more. Like, I think it's 129 or something for my family one. And it's, it's not very much more to get the business version. And when you get the business version, now you can do the $30 a month, where before you couldn't. So they have changed that. But this is the one I bought. It's Copilot Pro. I have a family slash individual one. And that's the one that's $99 or $125 a year. And now I am paying an extra $20 a month to get access to these other things. So let me show you specifically what happens in these tools. I'm going to start with Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word, Excel, Outlook, and PowerPoint. All those are ones where the Copilot Pro can go in. One of the major things that I don't like that makes it different from the, the 365 version is that you remember in that video I showed you there was a lot of overlap. Like you could say, you could be an Outlook and say, write this based on this Microsoft Word document. There is no overlap, at least right now, in Copilot Pro, as far as I can see. Maybe I missed it, but I've been living with it a few days, and you can't cross-reference things. But you can do a lot of the things you can do with ChatGPT and Copilot regularly inside without having to go out. It's built into my Microsoft, those four products. So here I am. This is a funny thing I do to during a session, right? I, I write a complaint and then we figure out how to respond to the complaint using these AI tools. So here is a Victoria, a concerned daughter. My father was very upset about his lunch today. He asked for green beans, but what you served him was not what we consider green beans in our home. My father and our whole family has always eaten the canned kind. And he says, your green beans were way too green. Anyway, so they were complaining about all this. And then now that Copilot is in here, if you see, I am, it's kind of right behind me there. There's a button called Copilot. When I hit that, it gives me the same little bar we had in the other one. We have now inside this document, all of those tools. So I can summarize the document right off the bat. Now, this one is very short, so it doesn't really matter. I can ask a question about it. So if it's like a 200-page document, you can just ask a question about it and get the answers right away. And you can also add writing to it. So this does take a long time. Y'all, this is like 154 words. It shouldn't take this long, but it takes a long time, every single time. So there is the daughter complaining and uh, the daughter having problems and everybody's unhappy. It also references back to the section. So this is a long, if it, if it were a long document, then you can go back and find the sections where these things are. So we start with that. Now I am going to ask for write a response to this letter. All right. Those one, two, three, four, five, six, those are the little references it made, like the, the footnotes, if you will, the references it made when it did the summary. So again, you can see it takes a couple of seconds to get it done. And uh, who wants to wait a couple of seconds? It's kind of a pain, but it is going to give me a note. So this cracks me up because every time I've seen this, it says this response isn't based on the document, which is absolutely not true because it is exactly based on the document, but it always says this. And here we have appreciate your feedback, although we don't, and sincerely, that kind of thing. Somebody asked, I just saw it, if you click on one of the references, does it take you to that area? I believe so. Yeah. So I clicked on that reference and it took me to that part. So now I have a response. Another thing, I'm gonna close this. Another thing that is built in is if I scroll over, so I am here, if I start scrolling over, very small, I'm not even sure which direction I should point, 
very small little icon appears over here. And now I can say rewrite visualizes a table, which wouldn't work for the green bean story. Insert from iPhone or iPad, that's probably a Mac thing, and uh, different things I could do. So it is allowing me to rewrite with Copilot right from here and drafting rewrites. So if I wanted to change what I was doing, it's right here. All right, and then I can replace, I can do that. I can change the, the format, concise, imaginative, casual, whatever. <laughs> imaginative would be fun. Let's see, so we've got all of that capability in there. Now, if I go to a new document, file, new document, when I open up a new document, it comes out with, let's draft something. And I don't need to, but if I did, let's see, write a blog post about allergies in middle Tennessee. So there we go. We're going to generate it. You've, you may have seen this before, but this is what ChatGPT is really good at. And so it's pulling things together and finishing up just like the other one. And it takes a couple of minutes. Now I'm going to go back to that first window and take this whole thing and go to another tool that is integrated now. And that is Outlook. Just want to tell you, let's see, it's still, oh, there we go. There's the allergies. It's still writing it, but it's coming in. So let me come back to here and come into Outlook. So inside Outlook, apparently, and I haven't tested this out yet because I, I don't use Outlook. I'm using the one on the web. It'll come, it's accessible to you with the web apps and with the downloaded apps like I have with the other. So by the way, it's still working on that blog post over there. It still haven't finished. But let's say I wanted to do a new mail and I am going to paste the letter in there. Now, somewhere around here, oh, right at the top here, I have Copilot and I'm going to say coaching by Copilot. And it's analyzing the email. Y'all, it's still generating that other email. This is hilarious. But it is analyzing the email, which was kind of a mean email. And it's going to give me some tips about how to change it so it's more whatever you want it to be. All right. Could be more polite, it says. The tone could be more polite. Instead of, I don't know how you expect seniors to want to eat vegetables, the email could say, I understand that you are trying to provide healthy options. So it, it gives you some help. Reader sentiment. Consider the reader's feelings. The email does not acknowledge the reader's feelings or perspective at all and only focuses on the writer's father's preferences and complaints. The email could start with, thank you for your service as a senior nutritionist. I hope this email finds you well. And then try adding more details is the last part. Make it more clear. And the email could clearly say, please remove the green beans from my father's menu or please remove the green beans from the menu from, for all seniors. So it is coming in here and rewriting what you have. I, you can also draft a response or, you know, dr not response in this one, but change that or draft a different email. One of the things that Outlook is supposed to be able to do is when you have a whole list, a whole thread of all kinds of emails and like 75 people chiming in with one fact each, it could summarize all of those emails and let you ask questions of the whole thread rather than you trying to get in there and play with it. So that's Outlook. Let me go to PowerPoint because there are some pretty cool characteristics with PowerPoint. I am going to come over here again to that screen. Here I have PowerPoint. I'm going to uh, do a blank presentation. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose a graphic. I don't think it matters. I think it always does something different, make kind of as yucky. But I put in a graphic right there. And then I'm again 
going to look up at the top, so or it's probably underneath me, and do Copilot. Copilot is now, I think it's right over my head. Let me see if I can move myself. There we go. I moved me. All right. Copilot, it, now you can see it, and you can do create a presentation about allergies in Middle Tennessee. All right. And there you go. You can also see that it has a microphone, so you can talk back and forth to it, which can kind of be helpful if, you know, you're just in the flow. I talk to my computer all the time, mainly because my silly cat wants to be on my lap all the time and I can't type. So right now it is creating this PowerPoint deck. I have seen some really cool things here and I have seen some pretty me mediocre things here. Bah, but here we go. Let me do slideshow and set up slideshow and I will do uh, browse so we don't take over everything. All right. So I am going to see what it is. I have no idea. And there's, is that an allergy thing that, I don't know, is that nose hairs? I don't really know what, <laughs> what, they're, what they're trying to prove with that. But seasonal allergies can occur at specific times. So it just wrote all this. And it did it a lot faster than it did the blog post, got to tell you. Indoor allergies. Uh, again, I don't really know what that is. Food allergies. Okay, that's food and it's allergies and there are facts about it. But it found all the graphics. It laid it out. And I, I think it didn't do it according to the graphic I had chosen. Remember, I chose a theme and then it ignored it. But aller allergies and asthma, it, you know, conclusion. So... In just a couple of seconds, we have an entire PowerPoint. Now you can do ask, add a slide about, and you can do a description of whatever else you want to do. And you can do ask it about this. So let's say it's a long PowerPoint and has way too many bullet points. You can also ask and talk to it. You can create and add a slide. Let's see what else you can do. Edit. You can add an image of a growth my, uh, mindset, I don't know, and ask it questions. This is all built in because I pay $20 a month to my PowerPoint. And even though I'm on the Mac, it's all available in here. Let me go to another one. This is tiny. That's okay. What this is, is y'all, there are more than a thousand people more than a thousand people who signed up for this. So the first few hundred people I decided to use to try to analyze the data. And Lord help me, I don't know if it's because I really don't understand Microsoft Excel very well or if it just sucks. I kind of think it just sucks. It was not helpful. So the first thing is that it gives me this error every time that says it has to be a table. Well, I don't even know what that means. I've never had to turn an Excel spreadsheet into a table, but it made me look, and you have to keep doing this apparently. I turned it into a table. And then it said, it has to be stored in the cloud, in Microsoft Drive, OneDrive or whatever. And I'm like, never had to do that with anything else, but I'll store it in the cloud. And then you're supposed to be able to ask questions of this data, right? So. I asked it, here are some of the things I asked it. It was, first thing I said, I said, what can you do? And it says I can analyze stuff. And the more I know, the, and then I said, analyze the content of the goals column for trends. Because I wanted to know, what are you hoping to get out of this? And I said, analyze that column to tell me basically what people are saying. And I couldn't create that type of chart. But here's something that will be helpful. This is not helpful. None of this is helpful. Make a pie chart. I can't create a pie chart, but here's something that might be helpful. This is not helpful. Thank you. And then I said, add to a new sheet. So I had it add that silly chart that means nothing to a new sheet. And I was able to go in there. No, I couldn't do anything with it. It just did it. Like there was nothing in there. So I found it very unhelpful. And I want to compare and contrast that with another tool that also costs 20 bucks a month, and that is the original ChatGPT. 
So chat GPT, if you pay the $20 a month, you can upload an Excel spreadsheet. It has to be Excel, apparently it can't be Google Sheet. You can upsell, uh, upload a spreadsheet file and then it will analyze it. So it says, it took me through the whole thing. I did this yesterday. I'll first need to open it and examine it. And then I'm going to have to, oh, it said, you can't do that because of Google Sheets. And I'm like, fine. So then I put the right one in there. It says, great, you've uploaded it. Now I'll open this file to analyze. Again, this is the $20 a month version of ChatGBT. The data set contains several columns. It identifies what's going on. And then I had asked it to analyze the email addresses to find out what are the trends. Like, are a lot of y'all from chambers? Are you a lot of from you from associations? Are you from construction industry businesses? I don't know. So I said, tell me what are the trends are. And it says, here are some highlights. 104 Gmails, 17 Yahoo's. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. And six people from NWPPA. Yay, shout out to them. So there are 542, this was when I had 600 or so, 542 things. Let's see, please look at the companies and classify them. Here's where I said, please like tell me what industries they are. And so it says, okay, I'm gonna think about that. .edu for educational, .gov, .org. And here's a breakdown. So commercial and private business, nonprofit association, other educational. It was so much more information. Then I said, then it gave me another summary. You can see the difference. And I said, did you disregard the generic ones such as Gmail and Yahoo? And it said, yeah, I did it because I'm smart. And then I said, I want to get a feeling for how people are using it. And it says ChatGPT is mentioned by 221, Copilot. You can see the difference. Paying $20 a month here, this is just one of the things it does, but the analysis is crazy good. All right, I'm going to show you one other area that apparently has the benefits for Copilot Pro, but they're not very big benefits, but it's kind of cool to see this tool. So this is Designer. Microsoft Designer is a free tool and you can create your own images. So what I get here, so let's say I wanted to do remove background, design creator, this is kind of fun. So you can come in here and do graphics. This is like a, a Canva-ish type tool. Describe a design. So an Instagram post about a new webinar. <laughs> if there's any doubt that this is in real time and I'm a real person, it's gone now because I can't spell. About Microsoft Copilot. From speaker Beth Z, your nerdy best friend. Now I can ask it to generate an image. I can add my own media. I'm gonna ask it to generate an image. Uh, let's see. Oh, it did that instead. So I'll add media, my media. Maybe I have something in there. Yeah, I have this one. Select it and generate. So now look, it does it in the box. I think that's so cute. Now it's doing that and generating design. While it's doing that, let me show you another tool. Let's see, it did not give me any. Designs couldn't be generated. Something may have triggered responsible uh, AI guidelines. You know why, y'all, it doesn't like the word nerd. So I will, <laughs> it doesn't. Sometimes it says that's not nice. <laughs> it won't say nerd in, in using uh, AI. I always think that's funny. So now it's doing it. Let me go to another tool. Oh, the benefits I get here are supposedly that I get more re I get more requests, I get faster requests, and I get better quality images or something like that. So here we have several versions of oh, that's cute. Oh, that's cute. Several versions of one that I can start with, and it's customized. Oh, that's cute. That. 
I can start using it. All right, so let me show you one other, and it's this, again kind of the same benefits where I can get more, more requests per day and things like that, but it's not that much better, and this one actually is not good. So not good video. Let's try that. And then I will click to add media and I can have all these animal pictures that I do, these funny, funny pictures. I think they're funny. And I will just do a bunch of them, including cat coming out, out of a computer, kind of weird. It's one of them I called. All right, so it's putting all of them in there and then I can click on get started and I can do bold. I don't know why it's, oh, it's still reviewing my thing. I want to say choose for me. And now it's going to finalize the video. This is ClipChamp. This is a video builder. And the other one is designer from Microsoft.com. I forgot to tell you, if some of you don't know me, I am Beth Z. I'm your nerdy best friend. And I speak about this for a living. So if you need a speaker, call me, y'all. These are the tools that I just tried out and showed you where they are. And I want to tell you what's next. So one of the benefits that the paid version of ChatGPT has and the paid version of Microsoft Copilot will have is what they call a GPT marketplace. And the GPT Marketplace, I don't know why they have such horrible names for everything. A GPT Marketplace are all these custom apps that you can use. Now, you have to have the paid version, not only to access them, but to be able to use them and to be able to make them because you can make your own. So I'm going to uh, explore GPTs and I'll do one that's, that I love the most. Well, we'll do Cartoonize yourself. I did this one. So I uploaded that. That's one of my new headshots. And then I cartoonized myself and it gave me that with a little nerd thing. But these are very specialized tools. Oh, here's one. So I did this. I was speaking for a real estate organization the other day. And I just put in a prompt called a family doing a spring cleaning in their kitchen and living room. And it created a coloring book page. And I can do um, a webinar with wonderful people uh, waving goodbye because we're almost done. I am finished with all the things I wanted to tell you. Oh, look how cute that is. Oh my gosh. I love it. I wanted to take this time to tell you what I've learned about this. It's fascinating. It is changing so quickly. And thank you for joining with me today. And thank you for having more than a thousand people sign up. I do have a big finish because I like to go out with a bang. Are you ready? That's rhetorical because I'm still on. Here we go. If you're confused about technology, there's an urge you need to see Beth Z TV. Thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it. And I hope next time we can work together again.